So the problem I'm having with the new excavator I bought is the quick coupler is Danish standard. Some kind of Hydrema. I think they call it Hydrema S45. Just like the Swedish standard which is, which is just S45. The difference between them is, yeah well let me show you. So this is the Swedish S45 standard. And as you can see, it's just too short. So basically what I need to do is I need to change this quick coupler. I then need to weld this wider and I need to change that. The thing you could do is you could basically cut this up and just make it wider. That is probably the cheapest alternative. The cost for this one is uh, 2,200 euros without tax. I would say this one is around 2,000 euros. So what I'm gonna do now is go and check with my old machine if the quick copper from that fits this. Hopefully it's the same diameter for the axles, which is 50 on this, 50 millimeter. So that's the cheapest alternative right now to steal it from the old x -Wed. The measurement is the same. This is my old. Yeah, same brand, brand as the other one.
the function for this quick coppers is actually quite easy. I mean, it's just a cylinder pushing a wedge. You put pressure here, the wedge go in. You put pressure there, the wedge goes out. And the, the springs is just there for security to keep the wedge out. Even if you're losing hydraulic pressure, it will keep the wedge out. So here you can see the difference between Hydrema S45 and the Swedish S45. It's the same width, it's just that this is longer. 38 and a half and there. Twenty-eight and a half. Is working. Next step is to make it connect here. So the plan now is to disassemble everything here in order to, to get this quick connection off I need to I'm not really sure what I need to disassemble but I guess I need to disassemble everything to get to the screws inside here so I might as well just take everything apart it's a good way to check for damage at the same time, for cracks in the housing and, and so on. And uh, this is going to get re-welded. I'm thinking about moving the, this part further back.
So this is supposed to be loose now, I guess. I guess it's easier if I remove the hoses from the cylinders. The only problem with this is remembering where, where all the hoses is supposed to go later on. I guess I could mark it up. So a good way to mark hoses is to use colored stripes. I don't really have colored now, but I'm going to use just one on this side. So I know that the one without is here and the one with is here. That's the plan. Yeah, so we got another hose, hose that goes from here to the motor. I need to take that off too.
So the only thing stuck here is the swivel part and that isn't that supposed to be stuck to the quick connector? Hmm. I don't know. Get this loose. There we So it took some time getting this off. The same length. Nah, not really the same length. So the shorter one is going there. How do I remember that? <laughs> so note to self on camera, the shorter one is going there. So, seems like the cylinder just was threaded in. I used a lot of thinking power <laughs> to try to figure out how to get this out. Just a normal thread. So, now to the tricky part. The tricky part is, how do I do this? So, what I'm thinking is, cut it here. And just pushing this. 10 centimeters forward. Since the swivel pack is coming here, I can't really weld anything about here. I was first thinking about moving this forward so, so I don't modify the cylinder. But that's going to mess with the swivel. So the cutting is done. Mm, I got it kind of straight. It's going to be something like this. To weld it back on. But let's let's try. So this is going on like this.
<coughs> so, something like this. So this hole right here, it's for auxiliary hydraulic. If you want to take out hydraulic from the swivel to, to a grapple, for example, this is the way to take it out. So I might as well cut out a centimeter more here.
don't know, maybe I could use the grinder to clean it up a little bit. Like this side. I tried some here. Here. I grind it down. I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. So next step now is to start modifying. So I need to make some seating for the spring around here. So this other one gripping the, the bucket when it comes out. And then the spring goes like so. If you lose hydraulic pressure, so the bucket don't come loose. To make the cylinder rod longer, I just gonna use a longer nut and the screw to reach.
in this is to lengthen this protection plate. Cut it here, I guess. And lengthen the missing piece.
So this is how it's how it looks after using it. Barely nothing left. I mean, a blaster cabinet would be nice for a project like this. So most of the steel wires when using something like this is stuck in the clothes and it's, it's like small arrows that penetrate you. And instead of painting this, oh, at first I thought I was, I should paint yellow again, but I don't know. I got this uh, Taikuchi red, so I might as well paint it red. I mean, red is nice. So that part and uh, this part is going to get black, like, that's why I'm masking them. No, this color was really thin. Guess I need to paint two, two times. Yeah, well, so this sucks. This paint was not intended to be painted by a brush, I guess. Hmm, I'm not sure what to do. Guess I'm going to try to let it dry and just try to paint it again. So what I'm going to do with this is the same thing. I'm going to make it 10 centimeters longer. I'm just going to make this back part lengthen some, somewhere around here. Sure, not the prettiest, but it will it will definitely work. So it's well on the inside and the outside. 
I'm pretty certain this will hold up just fine. So it's time for painting the rest of the parts and reassemble it. I did paint this three times and it's still not really good. So I really regret using this kind of color. It was way too thin. All the grease points in place. One there, one there, one there and we got one on that side. I called Encon to reassure that the torque settings I found was, was correct. And uh, at the same time I asked him about the, the shims and you're not supposed to put shims on this side. Only on this side. That's supposed to be able to move freely. So this is the only side you need to shim. It's supposed to be that way to release stress somehow. And I asked how much shim you're supposed to push in here. So he just said as much as you can. There's a big thunderstorm outside. Oh, there goes the power.
And there comes the power. <laughs> Even most artists have to the power is back. I just spent all this time putting this on the wrong way. So the cylinder are supposed to come here. It's supposed to <laughs> fasten there too. So it's one one crooked cylinder. Now it feels more <laughs> correct. I'm just gonna paint these last parts and uh, then it's pretty much ready. So I found some stickers that I bought, I think it's like three years ago, so I don't know how the, how the glue is in this, but it would be nice maybe putting something like so. No, it's not letting go. Hmm. No, I think this is ruined. Yeah, that's correct. What if I, what if you use water? Will that work? So this is all soaked in water now. would have looked nice mm. well so this is old and 
don't want to comprehend that. Yeah, it's really stuck to this tape. Well, that's sad. So I might as well just throw away all these old decals. No good, but I have two. That's actually new that I got to this machine. They're just a, <laughs> a little bit smaller. Nah. Nah, let's put it on this. So let's try this newer, see if that works. All right, let's let's give it a test. I'm actually <laughs> really excited about this. It's taken so long to fix this, so yeah. Everything seems to work except the, the locking cylinder. I need to switch the, the hoses on this. I don't know where this, if that's the hose leaking or something else. I need to check that out. I'm just gonna switch the hoses. That's going to work just as fine. Let's try it again. So another problem seems to be that it won't to get stuck there. This mosquito is turning crazy. So I have my mosquito magnet hiding here. So I've been leaving it on for two days now and it's starting to get full again. There are always much mosquitoes here but it's usually not this much. You can see on my leg. Still need to get used to the controls. So here is the, the spinning of the bucket. And on this side we we got the tail. So <laughs> Here you can see another project that's going to be done someday. A concrete mixer. So the season is coming to an end. I just wanted to make an end report how it's held up. So There's no cracks in the welds. Everything has worked perfectly. Some things i done is uh, I changed the, the hoses on the on the outside instead and the coupling, the couplings are new. 
I have a leak in the in the hose for the locking cylinder, and so I re I replace the seal there and change these hoses on the outside. Otherwise, I haven't done so much. Maybe I'll use this for around 50 hours, something like that. Usually, when digging, I take this off. It's only for groundwork, so I, I will use the rotor on when you need to maybe dig a ditch or something like that. Just for digging, I will I will take it off. I see no need to have it on. So it's now minus 17 degrees. It's a lot colder than it was for for a few seconds ago. The positive thing is there's no mosquitoes here anymore.